we should never be trying to lock this scapula in place to stabilize the shoulder. Hey everyone, Brandon and Brandon back again at the Kabuki Strength Lab. And today we're gonna to be talking shoulder health and why your scapula needs to move with your shoulder if you wanna have healthy shoulders. So I'll have Brandon turn around. Go ahead and take your shirt off, Brandon, too, so we can see what's actually going on with the scapula. It's very important to note that we are going to get into a, a okay positions even with compromised motor patterns. Our bodies are very, very good at compensating to get from point A to point B. But just because you got to point B doesn't necessarily mean you took the most effective path or the quickest path to get there. And that's what we're gonna be discussing today as it relates to the shoulder. So whenever we talk shoulder health or shoulder function, we always have to start with the scapula. And, and we certainly, even before the scapula, we really have to talk about the T-spine, but we're not gonna go there today. We're gonna start with the scapula and how that relates to shoulder function. So in a lot of strength athletes training, we are told to retract, really hard retract and lock your shoulder position in place. That's where we see the biggest amount of shoulder pain and problems coming from. And the reason for that, go ahead and hold your hands up here, uh, going like a bench press here, Brandon. The reason for that, lock your shoulder in place as hard as you can into retraction. Yep. If Brandon stays in this retracted place and he goes to press out of there, one, the shoulder's not fully going to move through the range of motion that should, and he's not going to be able to take advantage of his primary shoulder stabilizers on the front of his body, which are going to be his pecs, and because of that, his pecs are going to be underdeveloped, and he's going to probably have a lot of anterior shoulder pain. So as Brandon presses through that poor position, he can't actually protract his scapula in the bench press, and because he can't protract his scapula, his pecs are not going to fire as hard as they otherwise could. So that's one example. Another example is in the overhead press. Go and get to the bottom of an overhead press, Brandon. Now try and leave this kind of locked in one place and go ahead and press. We are still going to see the scapula move a bit, but try and get to the top end range overhead press. The shoulder joint itself is still going to move. Try and keep pressing. And this is always going to be characterized by a bent or broken elbow position and kind of a, a forward hanging hand position over your head. What we need to have happen is we need the scapula to fully move with this shoulder as he does it. So go and bring your hands back down, Brandon. Let's do it properly with the scapula movement. Good. And now as Brandon presses, we can actually see that scapula move with his upper arm bone, which is the key for all of our pressing and rowing exercises. Let's go over to the uh, seated row, Brandon. Go ahead and sit down here for me. Now we want to show a seated row done poorly with a locked scapula position. We'll often hear uh, we need to lock our scapula in place and put our scapulas in our back pockets to use our lats. And that's just not true. What we need to have happen in our rowing exercises is for our scapulas to move through a complete range of motion if we want to use the entirety musculature of our upper back. Go ahead and grab the handles there, Brandon. Leave your scapula kind of locked in place. Try not to move this and just go through a row pattern. Now I have to tell Brandon to do it this way because he's just going to do it properly. So it's hard to tell him to do the faults. Go ahead and do it again and hold it in that poor position. What we're going to see here is an upward elevation of the scapula and we're gonna see a huge over-reliance on his traps. We used Brandon for the video today is because we can't actually see his traps and, and other musculature because he's got a fairly big back. On the next one, go ahead and row into complete retraction here, Brandon. Good, and that's the difference between an effective uh, or a properly moving shoulder with scapula function. We actually call that scapulohumeral rhythm or the rhythm between this and your upper arm bone. As the upper arm moves through any range of motion in your pressing, rowing, overhead press, uh, barbell press, bench press, anything, it has to move as a single unit. We should never be trying to lock this scapula in place to stabilize the shoulder. And it's actually the complete opposite opposite of that. The scapula has to move if we want the shoulders to function properly and to be healthy. So when you guys are setting up for your benches or other things, we need to distinguish between thoracic extension or, or spinal extension versus scapular retraction because those are two very different things and that might be a discussion for another day. Anything to add, Coach Brandon? Nope, about covers it. Brandon, Brandon out.